couple of months ago, my friend's cousin, a single mother, bought a new cell phone. After a long day of work, she came home, placed her phone on the counter, and went to watch TV. Her son came to her and asked if he could play with her new phone. She told him not to call anyone or mess with the text messages, and he agreed. At around 11.20, she was drowsy, so she decided to tuck her son in and go to bed. She walked to his room and saw that he wasn't there. She then ran to her room to find him sleeping on her bed with a phone in his hand. Relieved, she picked her phone back up from his hand to inspect it. Browsing through it, she noticed only minor changes, such as a new background, banner, etc. But then, she opened up her saved pictures. She began deleting the pictures he had taken, until only one new picture remained. When she first saw it, she was in disbelief. It was her son sleeping on her bed, but the picture was taken by someone else above him, and it showed the left half of an elderly woman's face. If you have ever been in a near-death experience, you may have seen your life flash before your eyes. I've asked several people about this. They said that it was like going through their whole life in a second. That's not too far-fetched. Your brain likes to avoid stress so that it doesn't have to deal with facing death. So if your brain was to think you were going to die, it would go to the easiest way to escape memory. So when it comes close to the end, your brain turns on every memory you ever had. The brain will also stay alive for seven minutes after you die, provided your brain is intact. So if you have seven minutes and you can experience your whole life in one second, that's 60 lives per minute, 420 lives in seven minutes. That's a lot of time and a lot of experiences with death. You're at work alone when you suddenly hear the copy machine start up. You walk out to take a look at what's going on and see several copies filling the tray. Picking up one of the pieces of paper, you discover that it's a copy of a picture depicting you sitting in your office chair, dead, with your eyes torn out and your throat cut. The others are the same picture, but taken from increasingly bizarre angles. There is no original picture in the copy machine. In fact, the machine has been out of toner for a week. When I was a child, my family moved to a big old two-floor house with big empty rooms and creaking floorboards. Both my parents worked, so I was often home alone when I came home from school. One early evening, when I came home, the house was still dark. I called out Mum and heard her sing-song voice say, Yes? I called her again as I climbed the stairs to see which room she was in and again got the same yes reply. We were decorating at the time and I didn't know my way around the maze of rooms but she was in one of the far right ones, right down the hall. I felt uneasy but I figured that was only natural so I rushed forward to see my mum, knowing that her presence would calm my fears as a mother's presence always does. Just as I reached for the handle of the door to let myself into the room, I heard the front door downstairs open 
and my mother call. Sweetie, are you home? In a cheery voice. I jump back and ran down the stairs to her. But as I glance back from the top of the stairs, the door to the room slowly opened a crack. For a brief moment, I saw something strange in there. And I don't know what it was. But it was staring at me. You're sitting at home, on the computer, after a long day at school, like you always do. You check the clock on your computer, it's 9pm, and your parents are probably asleep upstairs like always. You hear a sharp sound of a TV turning on, and you know it's your sister watching Doctor Who, or playing on the Wii like she does every night. You decide to check your Facebook out of pure habit, and see you have a message on your wall. You begin to read. Your mum and I are so proud of you. You're growing up so fast. We just want to thank you again for watching the house while we stay at Disneyland Resort with your little sister. Hope you're having fun. You think to yourself, Oh yeah, I forgot they were out. You then hear something click. As you hear the sound of the television turning off upstairs, you freeze like a statue on your tracks. Your blood runs cold. You begin to hear the footsteps of someone coming down the stairs behind you. The silence after the last footstep leaves you choking with your eyes wide in panic. You hold your breath, daring to not even glare to the right of you. All you can do is scream in your head and pray that the silence never breaks. All you can do is pray for the silence.